There we go. Check now. Check, check. One, two, one, two. Y'all can hear me now. Wait and see. We're good. Okay. Perfect. So, welcome everybody. This is Sunday evening. We're uh, sitting in here in Harrison, Tennessee, getting ready to start the first ever Pro Bass Shootout. Okay. Um, we've been messing around with names, trying to figure out ultimately what we're going to call this. And this is a really special deal. I mean, this is something that um, myself, along with Brody um, and other professional anglers, we've been talking about it for a little while now. We've wanted, there's not a lot of live coverage in fishing tournaments right now. Obviously, we're missing that with the Bass Pro Tour right now. So we wanted to try to do something where we could try to be safe and ultimately still compete and, and stay sharp, but also do something that's going to be back, giving back to people. I mean, so I, I called up a few of my buddies and, and a few people, um, and now we have eight pros in this Bass Pro Shootout division of, of the charity event. You know, this, we're kicking this whole thing off for the charity event. I mean, how this is going to work is two, every angler that is in is putting $250 to, of their own money. Um, we're not winning any money out of this. We're putting our time and, and uh, on the water, but it, it, our time and money into this. Um, and we're going to donate this to a, a, a charity called Team Rubicon, okay? And, and I'm real quick here. I'm going to read you guys. Um, so we all sort of were trying to figure out what we could do. Um, there's a lot of different charities out there. But Team Rubicon has a, uh, a division uh, initiative of it's called Neighbors Helping Neighbors. Now, Team Rubicon is, is from what I've seen and what I've seen online, very highly rated. Um, and, and basically, it's, it's all... Um, it's all done by volunteer work, you know, military. Uh, it's also, um, whether it's first responders, medical professionals, they're all volunteer work. And then, and then the whole thing with neighbors helping neighbors is people that are ultimately affected by COVID-19. There's a lot more to that. So we're, that's where the money is going. Um, and we just want to come out here and put on a show, hopefully put on a show. Now that's the cool thing. I'm not fishing in this one right here. You know, I'm sort of playing tournament director. I told the guys that, Hey, I'll tell you guys where you're going to go. Um, this is filmed on Logan Martin. Um, and so these guys got a little bit of time to practice in the mornings. And the way this is all set up is very simple. You have three hours of fishing time. So um, one hour periods, major league fishing format. This is going to be a one pound minimum event. So um, being that the fish are post-spawn, I looked at the lake, said, okay, hey, look, I'm going to make it a one pound minimum for you guys. Um, and then ultimately... Uh, top two advance on. Now, top two advance on to the championship round because we have two divisions. We have the Alabama division and then we have the Tennessee division. So, the Tennessee division will air soon. We actually have not filmed that one quite yet, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So, that is sort of how this is all setting up. And, um, I mean, hey, look, I got some of the great fishermen and great, great buddies of mine, but great fishermen as well. Um, and, and they all fish a little bit differently. You know, I think that's the thing we're going to have. A couple guys on hopefully uh, later on uh, throughout uh, the stream. So that is the plan. But um, really, I can't I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate y'all hopping on because this is uh, this is something that's, it's definitely new to us. And trust me, there's still going to be technical difficulties and trying to figure everything out. Um, but that's that's something we're working through. But just the fact that you know we're trying to do something for you guys and, and ultimately do good things and uh, and have a good time at it. You know, and that's really the biggest thing. So hopefully everybody's having a great weekend, and uh, we're going to jump in. You ready, bro? You think you're good? All right, so we're ready to air right here, right now. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the first ever Pro Bass Shootout. This is for a COVID relief, um, and we'll talk a little bit about more about the charity event and what's going on here. But I wanna talk about the competitors behind me. Um, these guys, this is the Alabama division. We have an Alabama division and we have a Tennessee division. And I got four hammers, no doubt. Joe Lee, Jordan Lee, one of arguably the best anglers that's come around the last 10 years. Won multiple back-to-back uh, -back Bassmasters Classics. And he's taking plenty of my money. We got my boy over there on the end, MDJ, Mark Daniels Jr. Just fresh off a of top 10 on the Bass Pro Tour. And then we got Fletcher Shyrock, top 10 in points this year. He's killing it on tour. And then, of course, my boy DC. We are on Logan Martin today. This is the deal. One pound minimum, three hours. 
two 10 minute breaks. I'll tell you what, two advance on to the championship round. Let's see what happens. You got stuff, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna try to get it where you guys have clips and stuff. The biggest thing is just making it sort of like a couple back. mega strike bowl. Nah, bro. All right, you boys ready to go? Top two advance. Hey, we on the sideline, but these boys right here, they're gonna battle it out today. One pound minimum. The tournament director's giving orders. Hey, daggum hammers in this group. We got two time Bass Master Classic champ. Unbelievable. <laughs> I may just follow him around. Oh yeah, I'm really good out here on the coast. You know, I've spent a lot of time. <laughs> I'm on the wrong end of the pond. All right, we're taking off. 355, got a minute and a half. Get on duck on opening day of duck season. Two, one. <laughs> you guys a rundown of what these all right so to show you guys sort of a little bit of a rundown of what these guys are dealing with the water temperature is around 65 degrees most of these fish are post spawn the water is dropping and obviously a lot of places around down here in the south most places down here in the south have had a lot of rain which means heavy current and dirty water okay so normally what happens is when the fish and that water is pretty dirty, um, when the fish get done spawning, if the water's not really, really dirty, it's pretty clean, the fish want to get offshore. They want to get um, out there on those breaks, get out there on those brush piles, largemouth, spotted bass, Coosa River. Um, they love the main river. And, and, and I, I, I know more, this is the thing, I wanted to pick a lake that I didn't feel like D.C. was fishing all the time. Obviously, D.C. is one, one of my good buddies, but also a uh, uh, Coosa River king. Kills it on the Coosa River. And then I wanted to pick uh, where I didn't think really many people have been fishing. So that's really what I wanted to make it a level playing field. These guys got a little bit of time to practice and ultimately get it dialed in. So that is really what I've tried to do. Um, I actually capped them off. I told them, hey, they cannot go past, uh, you know, the bridge right there. Um, so it was the lower third of the lake. Uh, uh, and so that was sort of the, the plan, um, you know, and, and really from what I've seen, and you guys are going to see how it goes down, um, they all fish completely different. You know, every angler has their style, and people ask me, and three hours goes by super fast. You know, this is the thing, we were trying to come up with ultimately, do we go with, you know, eight hours, uh, but I think a live coverage, obviously, that would be a little bit on the, on the hard side, because I'm sitting here every time trying to make sure everything go, is going smooth. Brody's constantly uh, working hard to try to get it all dialed in, and so we come up with those three-hour periods, sort of like a weeknight tournament. You know, I think we all understand, you know, Growing up bass fishing, weeknighters were really what it was all about. I mean, I still enjoy fishing at the local tournaments that are here around Harrison Bay. Uh, Harrison, ba Harrison Bay Bass Masters, shout out to those guys. On Thursday nights, they'll put on a tournament, and they'll play the three-fish tournament, and that's some of the most fun 
that I have with my team partner, team partner buddy. Now, right now, we can't have a team tournament necessarily with all the stuff that's going on with, with COVID-19. So this is sort of the next best thing. So I feel like that was really what this all came up through. Now, Logan Martin, um, I, I've only fished this place about one time in my career. And it was not, it's actually when I was not fishing professionally. I was 16 years old practicing for a junior bass master tournament. On this body of water so to see you know this lake um you know now was sort of like okay you know okay i see i see what y'all got going on and i know i've heard a lot of good things i know i've seen uh joey nania i think he's a guide on this body of water i've always followed him and he does a lot of posts a lot of pictures of how many big spots and how many fish they catch throughout the day so i'm thinking okay hey, three hours to take these guys and let them loose some of the best bass fishermen in the country this is where it's going to be all you know it's going to be what it's all about clock on my graph not on my phone I'm gonna give it a there we go oh I don't want to snooze it all right pulled out here at a little hump so we could we could practice a little bit and uh, I caught several right here right around this little hump. So we'll see if there's anything on it. Probably won't get a bite here. Check my no bots on the first throw. For about probably four, four or five hours. Oh, uh, and this was probably the best area that I came across. Just getting no big fish, but you know, got several bites down on this kind of series of humps down through here. But there was a lot of boats on the water today, so somebody else could have came along and pluck some too so probably just kind of move around a little bit it is weird not having somebody tell me what if somebody's caught one Probably. There he is again. A 
This time I'm gonna let them suck on it. I don't think they're out yet. So it's worth a try. It's not like this. Three swings, three misses. Oh for three. Oh for three. I need some live updates. Yeah, yeah, I need to get my Yeah, I meant to look to see. Really good time of day, I like it. This ain't no 12 incher. This is a Jacob Wheeler fish. This ain't no 12 incher. These spots are crazy. There's a chunk. I mean, a good little chunk. Let's see what she'll go. I'm guessing that's bigger than a pound. That's the fourth bite. It may have got a little bigger here. All right. Two, two eight. It's going from two eight to two nine. I'm gonna call it two eight. Two and a half. There we go. All right, let's see if I can enter this thing in without screwing up. I'm gonna let him go. Two eight. Three nine three three nine three four <laughs> two pounds. You might want to do that. Eight ounces. This one's been beat That's on pretty good. That's not a bad way to start. Come it's on. It's just got a pretty sticker on it. <laughs> on the old shaking head on a bait caster. I didn't want to mess with them today. I didn't catch one that big out here earlier. All right, we got to enter. Let's see if we can get another one out there. Yeah. Yeah, I got it, my. Well, yeah, I got it right here. Good call. Yeah. I feel like thrift. I got like a six foot ten rod on this. I'm throwing the shortest rod in my boat, casting the furthest I can. 
for whatever for whatever reason I don't know it's probably not the smartest idea I just had this rod rigged up earlier or it was sitting in my garage so I decided to keep it on not mess with it Yes, yeah, this is a six foot ten rod. This is not recommended for casting a worm. But who cares? I'm getting up a little too far on top of it. Yeah, it's just kind of a little road bed or just some, some humps down, down through here and I worked down through here earlier and got bit kind of all around it. I'm going to throw that spook after a while. Or the Jay Walker. Yeah, I'm just right now I'm casting a shaky head. This is a Berkeley hit worm. It's like a seven inch worm. And throwing it on a little 3 16 ounce fusion shaky head. And it's a real shallow hump. It's like I'm only sitting in I'm sitting in seven foot. So it's only about three, three, four foot on top. I got a Carolina rig up, rigged up too, Carolina rig, but same like the shaky head, they Yeah, I pulled up here about 11 o'clock and, you know, just catching a lot of smaller fish. That's a two and a half and that's a, that's a better, a little bit better size. But I'm not getting as many bites. How are you guys? That's good. Yeah, I didn't catch one that big here earlier. No. Yeah, I could tell it wasn't a baby. It's a nice day, ain't it? And the camera's in it. What's that? No, nah, it just started. Yeah. I want those top water over it. Just try it. It's blistering sun, but we'll give it a try because it's so shallow.
it may not matter. It may actually make it top water better. We'll see. It's weird sometimes the clouds, you know, you, you, clouds are better, but when fish get kind of offshore, sometimes they really like that sun. Sounds good out there. Sounds like one's gonna blow up on it. Yeah, I don't think this is a very secret hole on Logan Martin. I bet these fish, I started out because I knew the lake had dropped, but this is kind of the, the shallowest stuff that I found that's offshore. So that's why I came over here. Hey, one boys. Thirteen. All right, that's one thirteen. just now you mean say it yeah. all right y'all so as we're trying to figure this out we got a little bit of a restart but um real quick here mark's audio he, when he was running he actually had it muted so the one thing is obviously we're trying to get it all dialed in hopefully you guys are enjoying it so far you know joe lee uh in second place mdj is not on the board quite yet dc with that 113 and then Fletch catching a pretty nice large mouth and taking the lead. So there's some good fish to be caught on Logan Martin, but uh, we're trying to get it all dialed back in right now. And that's the thing is, you know, we're going to experience some of the technical difficulties and trying to get this thing dialed in. But at the same point in time, you know, um, I think it's just sort of cool just to, to watch it go down. I'll, I'll tell you what, it was fun for me on the sideline not to have the stress of running around. And, and whether you see it or not, you'll see as, as you go through and watch this, it, it gets to the point where you're, you get a little bit, you get to the point where you're like, you know, you can see that stress with a lot of the guys, you know, and you can see, let's see it's building up and we all just hate to lose whether there's any money on the line or not. And I know you all feel the same. A lot of people feel the same way. You, you just hate losing. And so, um, you know, from, and the cool thing that I, I really enjoyed seeing is just from my personal view of seeing what went down is you could see like, you know, 
everybody's doing something a little bit different. You know, Fletch flipping boat docks. And then you got JoJo out there casting a dang, you know, shaky head around. And then you got Mark doing a little bit of different something with a spinner rod. And, and, and as you go down through there, it's just, that's what's so cool about seeing each individual angler and their styles and how they go about it, fishing in a body of water with very, very limited practice. I will say this as well. You know, these guys didn't have countless days or countless hours to go out there and find big wads of fish and look for fish. This is more so like a very much so like a cup event, okay? So what they're doing is they're basically going out there on very limited practice. Really, most of these guys were there for maybe two, three hours at max. So you're trying to get a vibe, number one, what the stage of the fish are in. Second, what you know what you need to be doing, what you need to be targeting the fish with technique-wise and then go out there and utilize that. And then I still, you're trying to make little adjustments throughout your game plan throughout the event. So that's what really comes down to it. There's a lot of game planning throughout that, but and it's even more amplified when you only have three hours. That's the thing that I, I mean, I feel like when you fish, I've always said this, fishing weeknight tournaments helps build your skill set way better when, and it help, really perfects your skill set when in making decisions under pressure because with only three hours of fishing time you have to do that now right now we're getting everything dialed in um so i wanted to hop on here and explain some of those things while while brody's getting it sort of taken care of and getting it ready to go so um but that is really what it goes down to so i mean i i know i'm excited to get out there and compete in one of these the very next one that we have or is here in tennessee we got andy morgan all right we got Ot defoe we got Brandon Coulter and myself. So only the top two will advance on um, to the championship round. And we got a little special something for the championship round and the trophy for the championship round. So um, what we got, bro? Looking like we're good. Going. All right. So we're getting it all sort of set to, and ready to go. Um, you know, the thing is, sometimes when we reset things, trying to move things here and there and allow you guys to have time to, to view it all, Buttons get pushed. I, I might have fat fingered something. It, it is what it is. But ultimately, um, we're gonna have you guys some, some hopefully some fish catches and some good content. for three. I need some live updates. Yeah, I need to get my. Yeah, I meant to look to see. Really good time of day. I like it. This ain't no 12 incher. 
This is a Jacob Wheeler fish. This ain't no 12 incher. These spots are crazy. There's a chunk. I mean, a good little chunk. Let's see what she'll go. I'm guessing that's bigger than a pound. That's the fourth bite. It may have got a little bigger here. All right. Two, two eight is going from two eight to two nine. I'm gonna call it two eight. Two and a half. Here we go. All right, let's see if I can enter this thing in without screwing up. I'm gonna let him go. Two eight. Three nine three. Three nine three four. Two pounds. Eight ounces. <laughs> You might want to do that. That's not a bad way to start. Come on. This one's been beat on pretty good. On the old shaking head. It's just got a pretty sticker on it. On a bait caster. I didn't want to mess with them. Thank you. Today. I didn't catch one that big out here earlier. All right, we got to enter. See if we can get another one out there. Yeah. Yeah, I got it, my. Well, yeah, I got it right here. Good call. I've done it. I've done that before. It's like never went in. Yeah. I feel like thrift. I got like a six foot ten rod on this. I'm throwing the shortest rod in my boat, casting the furthest I can. For whatever, for whatever reason, I don't know. It's probably not the smartest idea. I just had this rod rigged up earlier, or it was sitting in my garage, so I decided to keep it on, not mess with it. Yeah, this is a six foot ten rod. This is not recommended for casting a worm. But who cares? I'm getting up a little too far on top of it. Yeah, it's just kind of a little road bed or just some humps out down through here and I worked down through here earlier and got bit kind of all around it. I'm gonna throw that spook after a while. The Jay Walker. Yeah, I'm just right now I'm casting a shaky head. This is a Berkeley hit worm. It's like a seven inch worm and throwing in a little 3 16 ounce fusion shaky head and it's a real shallow hump it's like i'm only sitting in I'm sitting in seven foot so it's only about three three four foot on top I got a Carolina rigged up, rigged up too, Carolina rig, but same like the shaky head, they.
have been a bot right there. Yeah, I pulled up here about 11 o'clock and, you know, just catching a lot of smaller fish. That's a two and a half and that's a, that's a better, a little bit better size. But I'm not getting as many bites. How are you guys? It didn't really seem like... That's good. Yeah, I didn't catch one that big here earlier. No. Yeah, I could tell. It wasn't a baby. And the camera's... In the What's that? It's a nice day. Yeah. Huh? Nah, it just started. I want those top water over it. Just try it. It's blistering sun, but we'll give it a try because it's so shallow. may not matter may actually make it top water better we'll see it's weird sometimes the clouds you know you, you, clouds are better but when fish get kind of offshore sometimes they really like that Sun Sounds good out there. Sounds like one's gonna blow up on it. Yeah, I don't think this is a very secret hole on Logan Martin. I bet these fish, I started out because I knew the lake had dropped, but this is kind of the, the shallowest stuff that I found that's offshore. So that's why I came over here. Hey, one boys. Got a little rough bottom. Yeah, that's but I'm sure these fish just kind of. This time of year, they're they're always always moving a little bit, but. One thirteen. Be interesting. Oh, that's one thirteen. Right there. Working. All right, boys, we had a technical difficulty. So look at my phone. One thirteen, baby. Ooh, first fish. Let's see if we can. One thirteen. Just showing me the moment. It's 
So that's not bad. One thirteen. If I want it on a bait cast, I normally don't throw a shaky head on a bait cast. Well, he's got a 2.8, I got a 113. You know, I don't think the water's kind of dirty and they're not really, they're not really line shy, I don't think. But I need it on a little bit longer rod. I don't think there's a bunch, but there's some here. Thirteen, come on, big four pounders. Y'all fire it up. Got two or three bites. You want to make the most of it. Yeah, it's just a little road bed it looks like. Up here I got my, I got chart, sonar, down scan, and I got my side scan. And I can see the road. There's always little sweet spots when you're mm. fishing something like this. Another one, he just knocked slack in it. Dang it. One thirteen. Stepping all over my rods. Back going, I just had another one, son. Just slapping at it. Who caught it? DC, DC's on the board. We got Wheeler back here giving us score tracker updates, which I like that. I'm glad he's not fishing against us today. We, we'd be in trouble. nothing right here I mean just it was like just boom 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 there's somewhere around here I promise Right here's about run. He's, he's about to run that straight through some about two foot of water. Might have to give him a little different flavor or something. Shaky heads.
Y'all look right here. Oh no, y'all watch this. Oh no. Woo, that was a close one right there. That was a close one. Where did my scale go? There it is. It's about time. That couple hour practice I had, I shook off about five in here. This is the first bite. All right. 210. Actually, See it splashing around. 210. I flipped to the corner of that dock and it went doop. I like it. Little jerk bait. Two ten, first place. We didn't Let's try go. anything different earlier. I was just right. oh, here you go, here. Well, I came out here for you a few hours. I was just throwing that worm. Our little practice period. I feel like I'm in a straight up major league fishing tournament right now. <laughs> yeah. No, that's brutal. No slums in this group. Flasher Shy Rock, two, he's got 210. They want to be out. I promise you, unless, they want to Unless bad. he's caught two, he's got 210 total. Fletcher's on top right now. We'll have to step it up. Ay, 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 ay. Seems like you don't have to drag it very far. They get they when they bite it, they bite it quick. Maybe I just want to be out.
flat. He catches one. The, the flats just get one fish. And he ain't playing. He probably could catch 20 fish just behind me. That's stupid. It's not fair. Again, MDJ does not have his audio, so this is his first fish catch. He is on the board. We'll update that very shortly. They can go back down here again. This is dead though, right here. Thought this was gonna be money. Up on that. See if I else is <laughs> busted one. 30 minutes in. Canales on the board, 113. So we're about all on the board. Where they do not really want to come up. Maybe they will right it later in the day. Dinged up right through there. Unreal. I'm freaking real right now. That's unbelievable. I'm freaking real. That bobcat right there. To be able to do a live again. All right, we're going to idle it one more time and then we're going to go down here on this deep bank. I don't think they're going to be out.
something right through there. I don't know what they are. If not, I'm gonna go down there on that bank. Current hitting it. You're just streaming it on YouTube. Yeah. What did you just say, DG? Oh. They have a little action camera. Oh. One more cast. <laughs> That's unbelievable. No draws. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. He fell in. He fell in. He didn't want to wear wet clothes. Put a 
little shallower diving jerk bait on. I'm gonna give it one more try here. There's a keeper, I do believe. Yeah, that should make it. That should be over one. First cast, it's been shaking, heading them up. No bites. Oh, I got one to bite. Let's say he goes about one. One five, one five. Let's see. One twelve. One twelve. Nice little spot. Here we go. Went to a little shallower, uh, shallower diving jerk bait. Let's see if we can. Add another one in. One twelve, three G nine, three four. I like it. All right, one twelve. We're in it. Okay, see if we can do that again. They may not want to bite that worm for some reason. I don't know why, but they just slap at this. I can hook them. Same spot where I caught my first one. Came came back and tried something a little different. There was this Goggins. I think they're just kind of scattered down through here.
I'll go back to the worm for a minute. Just to make sure. All right, buddy. Yeah, I got a couple. He may make it. It's gonna be close. One, two. So just a hair over a pound. Got that one on the little hit worm. enter this in same thing I one two I don't know what these fish really want I mean they earlier they were they were really biting that hit worm well, that's why I just caught that one on Different. Mm. I think he'll go, but we're going to try. Be smart. One one, up. One zero. One zero. Was one one. Cool. I didn't think he was even close. I'll wipe my hands off real quick. Where'd my phone go. One zero. All right. They don't seem as grouped up as they were middle of the day. They're kind of scattered out right through here, but. Oh, 
pulled my pants down on the worm. I'll put right back the same spot. Boats everywhere. All right, let's go over here real quick. bags everywhere. Small one slapping at it. But just trying to trying to whip up something.
Alabama. Come on. And and I fish it for another hour He said it was pretty high. Muddy, but he probably can't. Should go. He's a little fat guy. Yes, a little one. Shoot. Zeroed out. One. Let me take my glasses off. One three. Yes, one three. It bounced up one two, but it's one three. Just a little spot up on the remote dock. All right. One three. So I'm in second, less than a pound behind Joe. Yeah, yeah. God dang, that's chiseled out. All right, we actually just pulled up on MDJ at this point in time. This one right here, I believe it's a 1-6. We're updating up. He caught a 1-1 one, one scoreable off camera, so we're gonna, we updated that. Um, MDJ's got on a little pattern. You could tell when I rolled up there. He, I could just tell he's like, man, he's, he's casting hard. And this is the thing, we're all fishing because we just don't. I mean, I'm not fishing, but these guys are fishing hard because every, everybody wants to win. What time is it? Four o'clock. <laughs> huh? Wow, that's a great first period right then. <laughs> great first period right then. Trolling motor right here will. Mind will if I borrow your dock for a second? I'm telling you, this <laughs> thing will get it. Once I get done picking out my eagle's nest. What a, what a great lake.
What's that? The score track it's been so. decent. <laughs> It'll be up on YouTube tomorrow. It's the only way we can fish tournaments right now, you know? <laughs> Got four of us out here. Come on, fish, right there. Oh. Lines out. Lines out. That's my alarm to stop. Wish I didn't have to have lines out. They were lighting so good. I'll turn around so you're not in line of the camera. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> so I've got to sit here for 10 right. minutes now. Time so. regroup. Amazing first period, guys. Amazing. Oh, fun. We're in the lead right now. Well, guys, that's the alarm. Three fish. Period one. Um, Five pounds. Sitting in second place. Cool. Joe's Ooh. leading, of course. Back to back, classic champ. But uh, it's not as good as what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little bit better. Um, I think it's a time of day thing. I could go probably back through one of the stretches I went through. Didn't get any bites earlier. Possibly catch some you know, in the last period. So that's kind of the plan. I think it's going to get better in these last, you know, this last two hours for sure. Now I've got to re-rig some leaders. Amazing. They biting, boys. It's hard for me to just go down the bank. This has always been hard for me to just go down the bank. You know it. They ain't out, they ain't on the bank. Man. Funk it down. Just funk it down. Yo. Hello? Everything looks good on there, bro. Yeah, it's, it's on and running. Let me check the battery. Yeah, we're good. All right, just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. He didn't catch any off the camera, did he? He caught one off the camera. Oh, no, no, I was just curious. Yeah, it's all good. I can go in a three box. I can go in a two box. Something and then, like, and, 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 Check, check, check. What's up, everybody? Let me make sure everything's good to go. All right, so end of the first period. Joe Lee has got on a little bit of something. You can tell he's doing a little bit more of a different deal than everybody else. He's fishing offshore. Um, you know, as I watch MDJ, I pull up on him, and he is out constantly looking for those fish that were basically fishing hard hitting places. I got it. Mm -hmm. Stop touching that. You're good. No, stop touching it. Just talk. You're good. That's the mic. And the hard hitting places for the most part is really what the, that's what I've seen him fishing when I rolled up there. Like Fletch is doing a little bit different, obviously. He's fishing for, it seems like he's they fishing for more largemouth. Yeah. And then you got DC. He's trying to make that current thing go, you know, and that's the biggest thing when you go out there. And it, it just, it's so cool to see these guys 
fishing completely different, you know, and that, and that's really what it comes down to. Um, I'm excited to see, obviously I have an idea of what goes down, but you obviously don't. So, um, that's, that's a really cool thing here real soon. Uh, we have the Tennessee division coming up. I think we are going to post it. Have not filmed it yet. Can't tell you where it's going to be at, but, uh, we will be, uh, streaming it Wednesday at some point in time, probably this four to seven, uh, four o'clock starting at four o'clock Eastern again. Um, but I got Ott Defoe, Andy Morgan, Brandon Coulter, and myself competing for the top two slots to compete against the guys who made the top two slots in this particular deal. Um, you know, I think I'll tell you what, these 10 minute breaks, just fishing that, that one when I fished with DC and then obviously fishing with Otter head to head, the 10 minute break is really, really, truly important. In this format, you have to be able to utilize the time to your advantage. This allows you to get your tackle together. If you break off a leader, which if any of you tie an FG knot or any kind of uh, braid of four carbon knot, it takes a little time to do that if you're trying to try, trying to rig up another a leader. And then the one thing that I have noticed with Fletch is he does flip a, a braid to, to four carbon on a lot of his casting rods, his flipping rods. So I'm going to have to get a little, maybe get him on here. Um, and maybe talk a little bit about that later on. I don't know if we'll get the opportunity. I'll see what he's got going on. But um, that is something that definitely is, it takes a little time. But regardless, the, the breaks seem to be the time to regroup, to get ready, to mentally prepare yourself. And I'm, I mean, just fishing tournaments throughout my whole life, that is the one thing um, in this format that allows you, it's, it's, it's like almost a time where you can, you can just really prep and understand like, hey, listen, I got to change, make some adjustments, put some rods up, cut, like get your deck really looking right, get some of the rods off the deck that you know that you're probably not going to use. Um, and real quick here, if you guys can do me a favor, uh, there's a little uh, arrow that points down. Click that link. It's, a, it's in the bio. All of the guys that have YouTube's Fletch is coming with his, but all the guys, DC, MDJ, and Joe Lee, they all have their YouTube channels. I'm really grateful to have them guys on. So make sure to, to, if you enjoy the content, make sure to go over there, click on their YouTube channels, go ahead and subscribe to them um, because obviously this content would not be uh, a possible without those guys hopping on here and, and really appreciate those guys you know, doing that. So we're about to hop back in here right now. Joe Lee's leading with 5.6. Fletch is in second with 4.13. MDJ is not too far behind in, in, in D.C., I got a feeling DC's got something up his sleeve. Kusa King, you can't hold him down. He's always trying to dial it in. And if he finds him, I got a feeling he's going to uh, reel him in for sure. We'll see what happens. I ain't oh, using that stuff no more. Gosh. Uh, you're just so with you. <laughs> Little guys like that. Oh, there's little guys like that. Oh, here comes Jacob. Come on, talk to me. All right, make sure your audio pack's on. Your audio pack on everything. Good. Yeah. In your pocket, make sure it's good. Yeah, it's good. Okay, perfect. It's good. Um, GoPro's all good. Good to go. Yeah, the GoPro wasn't on right off the giddy, but it, it, I caught one and I, it, it's good now. It's good. We got okay, the GoPro wasn't right on. But we got it on the front. front you got it on the front, you got a safety up front. Yeah, I mean, since we're catching the crap out of them.
All right, y'all. So we just got Fletch on the phone. Wanted to add, pick his brain on a little bit of what went down in that first period. Obviously, he's sitting right there uh, inside the cut. We caught a pretty nice fish. Fletch, all right. I, I didn't get a fish over there at Logan Martin. Hopefully, you guys can hear this. I have him on the phone. Um, and I'll put this up to the, to the, to the mic so you guys can hear it, hopefully. Um, what? Give me a rundown of what you seen during the, the really short practice period and ultimately what was your game plan in that first period and why, what made you make those decisions and what went down? Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me on. Jacob, thanks for doing this. Um, you know, I think we all got there. We all was a little bit lazy. We slept in a little bit that for, for, you know, for the practice. We all got there about 9, 9.30. Uh, surprisingly, Joe Lee was that the first one, which I did not expect, but he was just, just ahead of us. I was so, surprised. Was little, yeah, I think he was all shocked. Joe felt bad about it, like he was getting more practice in the we were, but, uh, but we know if it was you, Wheeler, you'd have been out, you'd have been out there at daybreak. So I'd have been out there before daybreak. Yeah, more than like out there grafting around and stuff, for sure. <laughs> I know how you are. But, uh, no, so the Long practice period, we got to fish from, what, nine, say 9.30, 10 o'clock till 2. You know, um, that I I went into one pocket, and it was a spawning pocket. And the first stock that I come, and I was winding a chatterbait around, and you know, and I pick, pick up a pitching rod and, you know, pitch up under a dock and uh, immediately get a bite. And obviously, I start shaking these fish off, and every it was every other dock or almost every dock in certain places had a bite on it. Some of them were small, like, but there was a couple of them that were hammers, you know. And I'm like, ah, I don't know if I can win because I really felt like, you know, those guys fishing them shoals, some of them drops and stuff, and spotted bass were going to be moving offshore. And I knew DC's a hammer, Joe's a hammer. Those fish there a fair amount. He's not, you know, he doesn't spend a lot of time there but he knows the place and you got mark i mean this solid competition i'm like you know what i can flip docks and if i can get you know some big bigger large mouth bites of flipping docks and maybe not catch as many obviously i like to flip and pitch i felt pretty good about it like you know i thought it was going to be a pretty strong pattern but you got to remember this time of year there's a shad spawn starting now obviously we missed it a little bit absolutely you know getting out that late absolutely right? um but I think a lot of those fish were up dirt, dirt shallow. And another thing to note, Wheeler, that water had risen uh, about a foot in a day. That's and a huge when deal. We was out there, yeah, and when we was out there, the water was actually starting to fall. Like it had topped out maybe at midnight and starting to fall out. I can tell you the bites that I got in the short time that we had were dirt, dirt, dirt shallow. And you could almost see their backs, you know. And uh, I, I think that falling water, you know, by that afternoon when we got to fish the event, that falling water definitely changed a little bit, especially, you know, up in the dirt. So Yeah, I think that's something that it's really good for the viewers to understand. Like when the water, paying attention to like a TVA app if you're on the Tennessee River or paying attention to the fluctuating water, whether it's rising or falling, whether, even if it's a couple inches, really does make a big difference. Yeah, depending on where they're, you know, depending on where they're sitting, say in the morning, like I said, I think a lot of those fish were really up there because there was a shad spawn. The shad obviously were yeah. probably just finished, you know, spawning up there. Like I'm fishing the for fish money right still now. up there, right? So then yeah. by the afternoon, things started, you know, definitely started to change. You add in the fact that the, there was, you know, fall, slowly, well, actually fast falling water if you do it. If I look back and do the math. So there was a lot of things going on that made it different mm -hmm. uh, from the morning to the afternoon. To be honest, you know, that uh, the practice can hurt you and help you. Like, it's not a guaranteed thing. that It's going to go out there and you're going to put everything on repeat, you know? So it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I look at, you know, and this is the thing, like, you know, normally we have eight hours or, or seven and a half hours to make adjustments on the water in, in a major league fishing style event like this. But with this, with being three hours, I mean, you don't realize how fast this goes by. Yeah, and another thing I, re you know, this event really got me thinking about. I don't remember a major league fishing event, even the ones that I've done well in, that I caught them all three periods. Mm -hmm. And we're basically Absolutely. fishing three hours, so that's one period, right? And I, and I you can probably attest to this. If no you really doubt. Go back and think about it. You have usually a jamming period, a solid period. And it may not be in that order, but at mm -hmm. some point you're going to have a lull, right? Yeah, you're going to have so one of them. Yeah, you're years. going to have a tough, tough period. Yeah, and it's just kind of the way the timing of things work. You may be at the wrong place, wrong time. There's just times where they don't bite doing maybe your particular thing. So yeah, three hours is not very much time, to, especially to make adjustments and try to and try to save it. So I tell you what, the adrenaline that I was going through in that three hours was identical to what I feel 
in a major league fishing event and you know trying to qualify for a knockout round in the knockout Absolutely. round trying to qualify for the championship it was crazy to me <laughs> how intense we all were trying to catch the next bass you know so absolutely yeah, that's awesome. What so what question real quick here? I mean, I know um, you know, you're, you obviously Fletch in my mind is one of one of the better flippers on tour. I always I always look at him for for knowledge of flipping cuz he really does truly understand. It. He spends spends a lot of time um, really really trying to dial in that technique whether that be flipping mats or flipping wood or flipping boat docks. So, you know, can you tell the people at home a little bit about your setup, what you were doing? I know you like flipping with the with the with the fluorocarbon braid, um, the fluorocarbon leader to straight to straight to braid. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and then the rod and reel setup that you were using? Yeah, so I mean, I basically don't flip anymore with straight fluorocarbon. I've been, you know, I've been able to adapt my tackle to make that work and there's times where and I've had to learn this uh, back when I fished the Elite Series. There was times where I used to use a pretty short leader, like a two- or three-foot leader. Mm-hmm. And you'd get in situations where the boat docks are staying five feet or the bushes may be in four or five feet of water. And what would happen so many times, and it's just, you know, learn by trial and error. But uh, a lot of times that knot, I don't care what knot you tie, it's not whenever you're tying a, you know, 40 or 50-pound braid to a 20 or 25-pound fluorocarbon leader. That's a big knot. And mm-hmm. I always change the guide the tip the tip guide on all my flipping sticks um to a very large ring i think it's like a size 10 ring and that allows that knot to slide in and out of that you know get it into the rod itself and then the rods that i'm using are ike series uh punching rod or ike Ike series flipping rods right now and they all they all have fairly large guides and i do that so that you know that knot slips in and out of if it needs to it can slip in and out of the rod tip and down into the guides you know pretty smooth it doesn't bother me too much the more you get used to it but the benefits to using braid i mean man i can flip so much easier i can skip pitch it comes off the you know mm-hmm. spider wire braid i like to use 40 a lot i know a lot of people don't understand that that's a big um, deal I, I don't ever I, I i don't break my leader or i don't i'm sorry i don't break my braid whenever i'm flipping with a leader um, it's always the fluorocarbon. So I want to fish the lightest line that I can. Number one, it comes when I'm making, say, a long pitch, it comes through my guides really easy, comes off the reel really easy. If you compare 40 to 65 or just compare 40 to 80, the thickness of that line makes it hard to make a pitch because there's so much friction in the guides, right? Absolutely. Not only that, the wind catches 80 or 65 or 50. Now, when I'm flipping straight braid, I flip 50. Um, a lot of guys flip 65, but the same reasons why I'm saying, you know, even whenever your bait's in contact with brush or grass or boat docks, the thinner you can get away with it, the less it's going to, you know, it's going to be easier to pitch. First off, it's going to come in and out of the cover easier. It's going to be quieter. So if you're flipping mats, 50 is quieter than 65, 40 is quieter than 50, but I break 40 whenever I'm flipping mats from time to time and I try to stay away from it, but I do like the overall feel. So we could go on and on about it, but, uh. I think that answers some of the questions, and I and I appreciate you saying I'm a you know pretty good flipper on the tour. I, I wouldn't say that. I just like doing it a lot. So uh, sucker, when you're switching out your guides on your rod to, to for a particular technique, you're pretty dialed in. So last but not least, before we go back to fishing, real quick here, what knot do you tie? Just for the people back at home watching this, what knot do you tie when you're flipping with that that braid to that fluorocarbon leader? I tie the Alberto knot, uh, and a lot of guys like tying the FG, but man, as you can it. see, like I'm always retying leaders and things like that, and I can tie an Alberto knot fairly, r- relatively quickly compared to an FG, and it rarely, rarely ever fails. Um, the one thing you do have to pay attention to, and I do want to note, a lot of times I'll have multiple flip sticks rigged up with the same bait or the same for the same situation because mm-hmm. once I get a nick in that leader, that braid's not. Whenever you sh- you know send that set that hook and send the shock through the line, the braid's not going to be the one to give. It's going to be your fluorocarbon. Absolutely. So anytime I nick my leader, I'm always trying to retie leaders, have multiple rods with the same setups, so I can get right back after because it sucks whenever you go 30, you know, an hour or 30 minutes without a bite, and you finally get a decent bite, you crack down on one. And uh, the only thing that's really going to give there is that leader. So you want to make sure your leaders are fresh and have a knot that's simple to tie, and that's why I like to use the Alberto. Hey, wealth of knowledge right here, my boy Fletch. We're going to see how you fare, buddy. Thanks for hopping on the call. I know everybody out there appreciates you jumping on here and dropping that knowledge. Oh, my God. Um, we're, hey, good luck the rest of these next couple period and a half, man. I know, you, I know you're going to catch them. Thanks, dude. I appreciate you guys putting it on, and I appreciate all the oh. fans for tuning in and watching this deal. Uh, 
hope everyone stays safe when we get back to uh, normal life here soon. All right, dude. I'll talk Thanks, to you bro. soon, man. Later. That was Fletch right there. Big shout out to Fletch. Thanks a lot, buddy. We're going to go back to fishing right now. Hogan Martin, baby. Oh, Logan Martin bass right there, baby. This ain't the deal. Spot. This ain't the deal anymore. It was. Two pound, four ounce. Two four. Two four, baby. Two four. Boom. Let's put him in here. We got a tight race, boys. One pound back from the lead. Fix to make a move. Come back here the last period. They're not biting really good right now, right here. Somebody wacky rig got hung in a tree right here.
There's a box. Nope. Someone touched my line. All right, yeah, we just updated score tracker leaderboard. MDJ is off camera at the moment, but he just reeled one in. It's just coming back on right now. We're about to get his feedback, and he's getting pretty close. Just moved into second place. Oh, it feels good in here. Definitely biting a little bit better in the morning. Or not in the morning, but... Even 11 o'clock. That jar just had to worm, I think. Yeah, that jar just had to worm, I'm pretty positive. from the shade. It's had sun on it most of the day, but Way to catch a big one. Derbies are hard. It's a great way to catch a big one, all right. Get a 12 ouncer. Showed me. Oh, 
Logan Martin. He's fixing to leave. 12 ounce are going to keep me around. am I going to catch him on on the dock? It's probably the worst looking dock on the lake, but I'm fishing it because maybe nobody else fished it today. It has zero shade. Goose is over here. Little culvert. Can't think of a better place to catch one, right? In the middle of a culvert. Was full, I'd go back in there, but it's they suck it down.
must be tiny. Same time. We're on the move again. We got 20 minutes. All right, guys, we have a little bit less than 30 minutes left in the second period. I'm going to give you a score tracker update. Jordan Lee is leading with 5'6", Mark Daniels Jr., MDJ with 5'4", Fletcher Shirock with 4'13", and DC with 4 pounds. It is anybody's ball game. These guys are running and gunning, and only the top two advance to the championship round. Who's it going to be? He might go, I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt he's gonna go, guys. Oh, gosh! <laughs> no, he about did. He's mean. One pound, two ounces. One pound, one pound, two ounces. One pound, two ounce, baby. Mm. One pound, two ounce. Mm.
We're three ounces back. Three ounces back, boys. On a slim shake. Logan Martin after them been beat to death. They're getting after it. Screwed it up. On fire. On fire. Mark's hooked up. Now I know ooh, <laughs> that one's going to dang. That one's going to score for sure. Oh, MDJ hooked up with a big one. Got him in the boat. Really a big largemouth. And uh, it seems like the bait that, that actually MDJ is throwing, it's his signature series bait. We're going to have him on um, throughout here because we did not have the audio on him for some reason. It got muted uh, actually right at the beginning of it all. So, um, unfortunately, you know, obviously Mark is probably one of the best at really breaking down patterns and what he's doing. And so I know we missed out on a lot of great audio. So I want to have opportunity regardless of what happens here. Um, get him on here and talk about how he caught these fish. 
Um, I know from, from special, just him telling me a little whale. bit, I know he did catch that fish right there on an MR6. That's his signature series bait. Um, and uh, he seems like he's got it going on. So, go. thing is, you know, each angler, uh, and he's doing something completely different than everybody else. It seems like, you know, Stand he's by. got it. I found him. He's got it a little bit. Uh, and this is the thing, you know, you got to cover a lot of water. A lot of times, if you don't have it completely dialed in, I feel like this is the great opportunity for, you know, somebody in this point in time to really look no at Connell, you know, run down the bank a little bit. He's fishing. We're gonna He's take slowing down right now on a place, a little current place. Derby. Fish, but, um, you know, afternoon. he has in that period ran down the bank a little bit. I mean, so it's, everybody's in that grind. One four. Hey, in there, buddy. I'll do it again. Hey, in there. One. Yep, one four. Boat ramp. We're on a pattern. Boat ramp, baby. Come on, load. Take it. We'll take it. It's not pretty. It is not pretty, but we'll. Oh gosh, I had one toting off with it. Put on a little crankbait. That's what I need to do. Quit messing around. Time. You got like two minutes to fish, it seems like. having so much fun back there. Got a little floating dock action right here. That's what we're going after.
unbelievable. Uh, uh. Oh, backlash city. All right, MDJ with his next fish. Ooh, didn't weigh it. Yeah, that's why the camera muted. Okay, so real quick here, uh, MDJ, if you have not, if you just jumped on here, MDJ accidentally muted his camera, or actually muted his mic right off the giddy. So we've not had a whole lot of audio. So we're going to have MDJ on here real shortly, uh, probably in the middle oh, of the fire the, the here, period. Um, just to sort of check in with him and just have a conversation fire. about you know, what he's been doing um, and what oh, ultimately, you know, he's caught his fish on so far. So good. I really want this dock right here. Yeah. Caught a couple right here. Boats running all over the crap out there. If they'd ever move out there, it'd be on fire. I catch them every cast. Five minutes. Not very long. Boats just running all over that stuff. All right, I'm gonna pretend there's one on this dock. We're on a lot of shade. MDJ hooked up again. I'm gonna assume that's on his Theater Series MR6. That fish no, right so there, point. real quick here. One pound even. One pound even. That should give Mark that nine pounds. What is it now? Nine two. MDJ giving him a little bit of room between the cut line. Hey, look at my boy. He's catching them. So Fletch, uh, real quick here, I see you guys are commenting as well. Fletch is, um, he, 
we actually had a GoPro go out right there. So we still have updates on on his fish catcher. He has not caught another scoreable bass in the second period, but uh, he will be back on real shortly. Whoop whoop. Doink, doink, baby, doink, doink. What time is it? I ain't saying out here.
right here with some brush on it. Marks and first.
right here, they're really doing a good job disguising themselves. Let's see, one's out. Man. Slow. I've been, I've been trying to fish a little offshore uh, places that I caught caught fish earlier today and it's just not happening but I've been throwing that little pit worm that's a seven inch worm. I don't know. I may have to go make the bank the rest of the day. Try something different. It's not getting any bites out here. That's the bank. They get on him whenever they get out. They get on him heavy whenever they That's kind of stuff we catch them on up here. But that's the man made. I'm talking about like regular stuff. Yeah. My driver's seat? We're here at the Coosa River, not your home pond. No. But, but I tell you what, the conditions are different. You know, we got stained water, yep. water rain, a lot of current, yep. but we are on the lower third of the lake. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're still in it though. Listen, obviously you're one fish away from the cut right now. You're in third place, right. top two advance on. What have you seen in the first two periods and what do you think, you know, your, your game plan will be for that, that third uh, I'm gonna give y'all a uh, mid-afternoon update. <laughs> oh. uh, mid-afternoon update time. Y'all ready for this? Uh, they ain't biting. They're not biting. I, th I really, really think a lot of these fish are that in-between little deal. Mm -hmm. They're not out. They're not still on the bank spawning, so they're kind of like, eh, let me recover. They're in limbo. Let me, yeah, it's funky time. Yeah. It's, 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 there, there's a time in the spring and the, in the, the between the pre-spawn and the spawn they do this, right. and then there's a time in between the po the like spawn to post-spawn this happens. They would already be out by now. Yeah, if it wasn't for all the rain and the mud, and and and, and we need to warm up just a little bit. Water temps like 65. You need to be like 70 somewhere through there before they actually get out off the bank. But whenever they do, Rap City. Rap City. So what you gonna do in the next hour? Give me, give me, give me a rundown. D sizzle. All right, so here's the deal. As y'all can tell, I don't like going down the bank. I hate going down the bank. <laughs> you I hate just it. cannot stand it, especially on the Coos River. If I can find them ever just dinged up where they're just doink, 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 mm -hmm. it's over. Yeah. And Absolutely. I don't really want to go down the bank. I could catch some fish down on some docks and stuff. That just ain't me though. So I'm gonna keep doinking around. I may run around here in a minute, go idle a little bit. I ain't got but an hour. Yep. So you got one hour to make it happen. You're yeah, one by the way. Dude, I know you're making it happen. Guys, hey, it'll be interesting. This last period is going to be it. Hey, y'all keep in mind, uh, it's been bluebird and sunny, and we're having the derb in the middle of the day, so it's kind of tough out there. Hey, I try to, I, 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 I didn't make it easy on these boys. No, it's not easy. <laughs> hey, look, Shad's phone, they're blowing a spook out of water. Woo -doo -woo -doo -woo -doo. Hey, middle of the day. Wheeler says, hey, listen, guess what? Let's have a derby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, little, little, little weeknight derb. That's exactly It's right. all good. We're going to find out. End of the third, or end of the second. Hey, get rigged up, ready hey, to go. these boys better hope I don't find them dinged up. Somewhere. I already know. I got like, I got literally. One, I got 60 minutes to find them. To, if you find them, we, we all know Game what's going to happen. Psst, psst, psst. Over. Over. We're going to find out that happens. Done. I could catch them off the dog.
This some bitch right here. All right, guys, we are back at you. Ultimately, <laughs> check it in. Hey, we're having a good time. These guys, you know, it's close. You can tell. Hey, ODC, the summon gun. He wants to find the wall shore. He wants to dial it in. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, this this third period is, is really interesting. So uh, we're going to get through this and we're going to find out <laughs> these guys. <laughs> They're having too much fun. I'm sorry. I was just on the phone with uh, with MDJ. We're trying to get the Skype stuff figured out. So if you guys do us a favor, let us know. Make sure our audio is good when we do get MDJ on here. Here in just a short minute, um, he'll be able to help and answer some of your guys' questions. I see you guys over here on the name on the live chat. I'm laughing as well, um, and it's it's good stuff. So we're having a good time. These guys are working hard. I, uh, I'm enjoying sitting here watching, and, and I'm a student of the game, so I get to really, truly enjoy uh, seeing what goes down, you know, in this next little bit, and uh, we'll have, uh, hopefully, I don't know, we'll sort of see what goes down. I mean, I'm, I don't know. It'll be awesome. But we really appreciate you all jumping on. We really do. It's something that, this, I mean, we've had an awesome stream going on the whole, whole time. We're going to continue to make this even better. I got a special guest uh, that I'm going to have potentially on uh, for the championship round. And I cannot tell you who that is, but it's going to be really awesome to have that individual on um, helping us out. And then, I mean, I'd say what, we've, we've had 1,550 people plus people on at one time. We've consistently been holding strong on, on the live stream. So I got to thank all of you so much for that opportunity, man. This has been awesome to have you guys on here, being able to watch this um, and see like what we do. I mean, we're, we're competitive individuals. It's what we do for a living. And ultimately, that is what makes us who we are. And uh, these guys, you can tell, they're not they're not messing around. They're fishing hard. I'm excited to see this end of this third, in the middle, in this third period and see what left. actually goes down. It's out here. It's, going, it's a toughie. It is a toughie. That's what I call it. Tough E. It's not easy, I know that. We're gonna doink around a little bit more. I don't really wanna go up shallow, but I might have to to catch a big one. I don't know, I might have to go in there and catch a big largemouth, catch up. These spots are acting funky right now, as you can tell. Funky. What are we gonna do? We're gonna scrap the video today and just finish it on Mitchell or what? <laughs> No, we can finish the video. Can we? Yeah, we'll edit it. Yeah. What about that? I hope, I hope we can finish it that way we post it a little bit. Oh, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I would love to do that. Dude, I can have it. I can have it out by tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Only problem is it ain't. It, 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 we're at Bogus Martin. Yo, can y'all hear me? Check, check. Let's get some comments. Can y'all hear me? Can we? Can we hear MDJ? Can we hear Brody? Can we hear checking in? You? Can you guys hear Mark Daniels? <laughs> I think GC has shaken baby. That's funny. Yep, they can hear you, Mark. Right on. Awesome, awesome. Jay Wills. Yo, buddy. Let me hear Hey, I'll awesome. tell you what. I'll tell you what. All right, we want to check in, guys. We got MDJ on here. We're checking in with y'all. I'll tell you what, man. Thank you so much, Mark, for hopping on, man. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Logan Martin seemed a little bit stingy for y'all, but <laughs> you seem to be dialing in a little bit. Man, she was a little funky, man. It was crazy. You know, um, as you as you referenced earlier, well, you have Fletch on. You know, we had a couple hours to run around. Mm -hmm. I actually never even been to Logan Martin. So this is my first time. Um, and, man, you know, those fish are just getting done spawning. Then you got the shad spawn right there getting ready to happen. The water level's high. It just got them all scattered all over the place, man. And it was really hard to get down in on one particular technique. But 
I idled around. I found a few fish on my electronics. You know, I thought that were really going to go like a small school of fish. And uh, I showed up and fished them for like 20 minutes, never had a single bite. And so uh, with the given conditions, the high rising water stain, I was like, you know what? Let me put all this stuff down. Let me pick up a crankbait and try to cover as much water as I possibly can on these hard hitting places just outside of the spawning base. Now, question real quick here. Like, you know, we obviously had, a, you guys had a limited amount of practice. This is very short. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to, to limit these areas. So just real quick here, guys, so you guys know, I, I, you know, I'm trying to shrink down these bodies of water that we are fishing, whether they're fishing smaller bodies of water, one, or fishing smaller zones. So, you know, we're only fishing three hours, so we really don't, they don't have a lot of time to really dissect it. You only have a few hours throughout the day before the tournament actually starts and the event starts to figure it out and get a little bit of a feeling what's going on. So that's what we had going on. In, in that ride through, in that practice period that you had, very short amount of time, probably three, four, five hours maximum. Um, what did you see, and, and did you get quite a few bites? What, what, what was your thoughts on that practice period and really what, you know, what did you see on Logan Martin during that practice period that gave you a little bit of insight that you have right now? Yeah, I uh, immediately in some of the shorter bays and pockets, I noticed the fish to be in that, you know, four to eight foot range, which told me that they were definitely done spawning more or less and that these are the first places that they come to before they make mentally their push out to the main river, you know, to do, do their thing out there. And so immediately I'm like, okay, if you could find a school of them somewhere off the bank, you could catch them probably every throw. And I thought I found a place like that. It just didn't, it didn't go down quite like I thought, but um, they were in that in between, like you just stated, man, they were in limbo, man, a small percentage still spawning a handful of them just done spawning, but still relatively shallow. And then you have some fish that spawn early that were kind of out in that 10 and 12, but not enough to where you could sit there and really target them and beat on them. So, I was trying to do all three of these things in a short three hour period. It was crazy. That And that's what's crazy about it. I mean, normally, and Fletch actually said a little bit about this. He said, listen, he's like, um, when when you guys, you guys under, you gotta understand, in a Bass Pro Tour event, when we're out there competing, right. we have three periods. Okay, that's three two and a half hour periods. Right. You're making, you know, this event right here is one hour period. Okay? Right. So this is a very short amount of time. We do have two 10 minute breaks. And right. that allows you to have a little bit of time to sort of, you know, collect your feelings on what's going on and get your mental, you know, stay back in and, and figure out what you're gonna do going forward. But it's 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 high. I mean, it's high pace. It's even faster than what we got to do on the Bass Pro Tour. Dude, it's, it's it's intense, man. I mean, it's basically our whole day was basically a period, right? Absolutely right. With minimal practice time, so you still trying to get dialed in. You still trying to keep an open mind. Try different things. You fishing in. You fishing out. You fishing in between. You cranking. You jerking. You shaky. I mean, you trying to do it all to get an idea of what's going on. And the the messed up part about that is. There's a few fish in all of those different stages. So you might mm -hmm. get a you might get a bad indicator. And that's what I got. I got a bad indicator in my little two hour ride around period. I got a couple bites in a row on one offshore place that I really thought was gonna go. And I never had a single bite there. And so it messed me up. I wasted a lot of time fishing that area because I had a lot of confidence there. Uh which made me kind of have to bounce back to just instinctual fishing, which which is something I love. So I just picked up my signature crankbait, that MR6 um, in Silverado, and just started covering water, man, kind of hitting all those hard-hitting places, main river short pockets, the mouths of them where the current was hitting, and a lot of those shad are kind of staging in those areas too. Now, all right, now quick here, you know, I, I, I pulled up to you at the end of the first period. I'm looking, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm analyzing what you're doing, obviously – you had caught a few fish, you know, it, it did seem like that cranking bite. You were doing something a little bit different than everybody else. As you could see, everybody else was whether flipping or shaking or throwing a vibrating jig. Right. You know, you, you had a different mindset. I think that's a big, you know, it's a big deal. Like, I think that sometimes people think of a, of a crankbait as a pre-spawn technique. Right. Uh, and, and they sometimes forget that some of the best cranking of the year is in the post spawn. Now I'm not talking offshore. I'm talking that pre that post spawn transition bite. I can right. remember back in Indiana, 
that's probably my, one of my favorite bites that we deal with before the fish get really off. They're dinged up offshore. Right. That is one of my favorite bites. And that's like, that's exactly sort of what you were doing. I mean, what was your rod set up? You, you obviously said, you know, you were really looking at the mouse of those places. Yeah. You know, rod, reel, line set up. You know, what was what was that line, that whole setup that you were using to get that done in that, in that second period? Yeah, I, uh, man, my, my favorite rush seven foot medium heavy it's a relatively parabolic graphite rod that you can get away with cranking i really like it it's lightweight same rod i throw my popper my jerk bait small swim baits it's, it's really relatively uh versatile 12 pound cigar brace x anytime i'm down there banging on the bottom i like having that abrasion resistance in my line um and then you maximize the depth of that mr6 with 12 pound line so that was more or less to set up uh six eight to one on the gear ratio i don't like too fast of a reel just because I really like uh, to work through the area thorough. I feel like if I up the gear ratio, oftentimes I overfish and I kind of just fish through fish as far as rather than, you know, kind of fish through them. So that's my setup. That's what I really like. And again, the MR6, one thing I do love to do with this bait, um, I take it out of the package and I, and I switch out the hooks, man. I really like putting on those owner ST35s. All right. Excellent choice. Light wire, short shank super sharp and sticky and uh man it gets to put, puts a couple extra fish in the boat for me no doubt dang mdj mdj doing work there's no doubt right now we're looking at the score tracker and the leaderboard you're leading you know by by a few pounds i mean dc is sitting there in third place only the top two advance on i mean this is the thing you know going into this we we had had conversation about you know hey man what can we do ultimately right Man, there's so much there's so much negativity in the world right now. Right. You turn on the news and this is happening, that's happening. And I feel like we were like, listen, we, we gotta do something as as anglers to as a positive thing. You know, we gotta do something ultimately in a positive light. I think, you know, that's the one thing that, you know, I feel like DC myself and MDJ, those are my boys. And yeah. I feel like Mark and I are very much alike. We're very positive people. We look at things we're, we're cup half full kind of guys that's right and i think that's what um you know talking about what we were doing going into this you know we wanted to ultimately come up with something and a charity event was was really important to us i think that was really something that that really that hit home and we know there's so many people around the around the world that are affected by covid19 right. whether that means you they, they a family member might have had it or that means whether it's you lost your job. I mean, there's a lot of people out here out of work, and, and including ourselves. We are not competing tournaments, so we are coming out here not only to uplift some of these guys uh, and, and give you guys something to watch, but also to try to do a good thing. No doubt, man. And uh, I got to take my hat off to you, my boy Jay Wills. Everybody know me and Jay Wills are tight, man. And uh, the mastermind behind all of this, and huge shout-out to Brody sitting right next to you, Big too, man. Time. He, uh, man, making all of this happen. This was a great idea, man. And um, – like you said, there's so much negativity in the world right now with this COVID stuff, man. It's kind of taking everybody out of their normal day-to-day -day life, us included. We all love the fish. And fortunately for us in our profession, it allows us to kind of get out and we don't have to be in large crowds and things like that. We can get out on the water and kind of still do what we love. But then now you couple that with the live streaming that you guys created and, man, this is an awesome entertainment factor that we as fishing fans, because I'm a fan of the game myself, myself, man, we've been missing this, man. This is we're not used to this. There's no fishing on TV. Uh, it's not it's not going down. So thanks to you, man. And, and Brody, you guys working really hard and all of us anglers coming together, putting our minds together, man, uh, trying to make mm -hmm. the best of these trying times. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like, yeah, big shout out to Brody. Brody's over here working hard for y'all. Oh, yeah. He's the guy behind the camera. He's the guy trying to make it all work. I mean, I, there's no doubt about that. I mean, we could not be able to do this without Brody. Uh, and, and we appreciate you, bro. No doubt. I think everybody realizes that. And, you know, so just letting you guys know that, no doubt. We yep. could not. <laughs> we're just fishermen. We're out yes, here. Right. We, got the, yeah. we got the tech master <laughs> over here on my left-hand side trying to get it all dialed in. And, and allowing you guys to have this content. So I think that's a big deal. So, I mean, you know, this is the thing. When I'm looking at, at Logan Martin as a, as a fishery, now Logan Martin fluctuates quite a bit. It has been fluctuating quite a bit. And when I look at, like, the Tennessee River, this is a big thing as well for you guys out here on, on, on the feed. Um, 
the Tennessee River, I feel like, you know, obviously Logan Martin's a little bit different than the Tennessee River, but at the same point in time, it stays still fluctuate. Fish get a little bit goofy. Uh, water has to come up on the Tennessee River in a lot of ways on the upper parts of these rivers um, for the water, for those fish to actually go back in there and actually end up spawning. And, and, and so I, I could see these places actually taking a little bit longer for these fish to truly spawn and get spawned out. It takes them a little bit longer, especially I know for firsthand, um, you know, on the Tennessee River there. And I would assume it's a lot like that at Logan Martin, Neely Henry, you know, the Coosa in general, because <coughs> that fluctuating water really messes with the spawn. And I think that's something that, you know, it's, it's something definitely to add when you look at those places rather than a Lake Martin, um, right. you know, where a place is, is a little bit more more stable, the water clarity is a little bit better. Those right. fish can be able to spawn in four foot of water. Um, and the water's not going to fluctuate as much. That's right. Yeah, no, no doubt, man. I mean, we've had a lot of weird rain and storms this year, man, which uh, always makes for crazy spawns. You know, I bet there's still some fish on Logan spawning right now. I think the vast majority mm -hmm. of them are done. Um, but I just think with the with all the rain, the temperature fluctuation, I mean, here we are in April, but it feels like March. I feel like March was April and April is March. It's weird. Uh, with all the rain and just the, the fluctuation of temperature. So there's probably a handful of fish still spawning right now, but um, these storms kind of goof everything up and put them again in that term that you used earlier in animal. limbo, which makes it really hard for a fisherman to try to get dialed in on any particular pattern in one given day. Absolutely. Uh, right. Yeah. And that and that's the thing. All right, guys, real quick here. That one should ask maybe. a ton of questions. I'm gonna have MDJ on here throughout this this uh, this third period. Go ahead and drop a comment in the live chat. We're constantly managing that right now and trying to, I'll try to write some of those down. Um, and we'll have MDJ on here to answer a few of those questions um, here a little bit later on. But we're going to let you guys watch. We got all four of us up. Fletch has got one right now. He's weighing it in. One, one. And things might just get interesting. So we'll check back in here very shortly. One, one. That was a male on a bed. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you're not going to need him. Uh, I don't want to nip at it. A little baby. It's still a derby, though. That's the good that's the good side of it. Everyone's still in it. I, yeah, dude, I shook off one earlier. That was like, it was like just in a branch blown off, you know, and I flip it and it's like boom. Jumbo strength. Straight out. There. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna we're gonna catch some. Huh? I went to it, I didn't get no. Uh, Dude, it's like, dude, crickets compared to earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't like, what time it wasn't like it? it was crazy, and you could tell a lot of them were small. What but time is it, Core? Oh, I should have caught 10 dude. fish, I would think, you know? Not four. Oh, well. What's it like being on that side of the on that side of the whole situation? It's different. <laughs> you losing your mind yet? Oh yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, dude, I'm in it. Like, not any different than a regular MLF event. It feels no different. We need to do it. Like, I know it's a lot of work for you guys, but we need to do this stuff more often. It's good to, it's good to get that. Yeah, exactly. It's good to get that feeling and, like, fishing under pressure and, yeah. No, you can't. As hard as you try to practice, it's just not the same. 
Yeah, this is not what I, ex I expected us to have. I expected each guy to at least have 10 fish. Right. What's that? Hey, stop right there for me, if you don't mind. I'm gonna hit them poles. I shook one off on that pole earlier. It was maybe a two pound largemouth. Sucker wouldn't let go. It almost feels like I'm fishing behind someone. It's so dead. That, yeah, I don't think that's what it is, but it just feels that way. What a day. <laughs> I said, what a day. Boy, that's just so good. Oh, shoot. I thought I broke my trolling motor a little bit ago. I got stuck. The, the, the breakaway kicked in. I was like, well, I'm done. If I'd have had all tricks, I would have been done. You guys have been on me like a total of three minutes, and I've caught two of my fish while you were watching. Now, what's the rule on the lot, though? Is it MLF rules? Or <sighs> One cast. Night light right there. So there's a night light right there. I, just, I guess he just stays on all night, all day too. All right. All right. I gotta go somewhere new or something. I don't know. Go down here and throw on this little hunt. Call it good. You know, when you come out, follow me out, it's like dirt oh, shallow right in here. good. There ain't no way, son. Three hours on this pond in the middle of the day is tough. It feels weird for me, too, you being over there. Hold, holding the camera. COVID-19. It's the only time you're going to see this shit. <laughs> yeah. They just ain't, they ain't doing it. Let's come to catch some of your fish right. and put them back. Man, it, mm, 
I know why I don't fish down this river now. <laughs> I, I know why I don't fish down this pond now. This is crazy. Yeah, I'm stressed out. <laughs> Was Connell cussing? <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Where are they gonna go? Swim out here? I don't That large mouth I caught was all spawned out. She's pretty ugly looking. Like white. Come on, one four pounder. Nah. <laughs> I've never seen so many fish just on the bottom so and just hanging out. Thing, you know what I'm saying? They were biting better earlier and then. I mean, everywhere. All right, let's run down here to this little point and maybe catch some. If not, we'll call it a day. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, I love Hogan Martin, baby. There she was. That was a good bite, too. I don't know how. Bite it again. one of them 1-1 one, one spots. Bogus. Hmm. Bogus mark.
You said you've been having trouble with your buttons too, the pull buttons. They weren't working at all earlier when I first started. Do you have another button up there? I got a, I got another one right here. I can reach down and hit it when they're. They lacked up, and I'll use the manual one for a while, and then. Who's? Did I put that fish in? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Who caught another one? Is he leading? Okay. Oh, this morning. Mm-hmm. Was that a spot? Or you don't know? What was it? What time's this over? Dude, this goes by so dang fast. <laughs> Atrocious. Yeah, you can't. I mean, Nick and Jack, Nick and Jack, you could do it in two. Oh, yeah. Pretty bad down here. Pretty bad down here, guys. Here. No, I was just saying they were biting better. That's all. But you don't always, you don't always know, you don't always know that. Pretty bad. All right. I'm going somewhere. So Joe's in second with seven something. I wish I wouldn't have lost that. I couldn't get my hand on the reel. My hand kept slipping on the reel. Freaking right at the side of the boat. Dude, it died on me at the end of the second. Man yeah. in the current at all. Yeah, I did. I got it up and going. I didn't catch nothing though, so it didn't matter. Keep flipping down. Just keep flipping them. I just broke him off. <laughs> uh, I don't know what time do I get. 5.48. Hogan Martin. I do not fish down the river, guys. I'll be honest with you. I normally fish up the pond. I don't fish down here. Very specific reason. <laughs> Death zone. I don't like fishing down here. But, you know, there's some fish down here. I just didn't really want to go down the bank. Nine times out of ten, you ain't going to win just going down the bank. Yep, you get lucky, you catch them. I don't like going down the bank, I'll be honest with y'all. I don't like it. <sighs> Logan. Whatever y'all do, don't go fish like this right now. Cause you ain't gonna catch nothing. 
Yeah, don't go fishing like this. Don't go try to find them wadded up, because they're not. Because they're not. All right. time is it now? My what call, that's good. Even if I did catch a couple of them, I couldn't put them in enough time. <laughs> All right, y'all. We definitely have an update. Leaderboard update looking pretty hey, now, good. Me. Joey hey, with a 2 2, ultimately having 10 pounds. MDJ with 10 8. I, I, I will have Mark on here very shortly. Um, just hold on. Drop them comments in the live chat, and we'll try to get to you guys very shortly. Any questions or except? <sighs> How you doing?
So I guess the conclusion of this is I'm not very good at catching small ones or getting a bite. Uh -huh. uh, I should have just went and fished docks the whole time. Should have just went and fished docks the whole time. Throw it down. I'm freaking believable. Guess it's just gonna keep on storming too and keep it muddy. What time is it? Oh, I got a 620. That's what I was, I forgot. I got a 620 instead of 6. All right, well, let's go back over here. Where I can actually get a bite at. Go dunk around over there. Hey, easing. Hey, easing along.
this ain't out here. Bogus Martin. I just refuse to just go down the bank. I just don't like doing that, guys. I just don't like going down the bank. I probably should, but oh well. I probably should go down the bank, but it's all good. What time is it? Oh, we're just on a big old giant bag right now. Are you watching Mark? Yeah, I'm watching. I got it on my computer right here. I gotta get my computer outside. On an old big bag. Yeah, I'm watching him live right no. now. Yo, you, Yo, you didn't jerk, jerk, you didn't jerk, jerk you up, up old bigs. All right, what's up, guys? We're back at you. This time, I got two mega hammers. On the phone, I'm talking about MDJ, Jordan Lee. Thank you guys so much for hopping on. I'll tell you what, guys, Logan Martin was a little stingy, but you guys are definitely slowly dialing it in. Yeah, yeah Mark, Mark, Mark dialed, dialed it in pretty, pretty, pretty good, good there, there uh, especially, especially towards the end. Started. started. I, 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 I caught a few. He caught a few. MDJ, MDJ, right here. I see you. You're real close to DC. You said you were a little yeah, bit yeah. closer to DC. What was going on? You slowed down. You switched it up. You got that spinning pole in your hand, bro. Yeah. 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 Let me, let me, let me hear what was going through your mind at that moment. Hey, hey when, 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 when it's, it's tough, tough, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm known to whip out, out old Nerick, man. Nerick, man. And, uh, that's, that's what, what I did, did here. I had, I had ran through this area really, really quick, quick in practice. practice. There's, There's actually a road bed that shoots across the creek right there. Um, um, it almost, almost connects to the, to the bank. bank. Well, out, out in front, front of that road bed, bed, there's some scattered boulders. And again, again I, think I think a lot of those fish, fish that were sitting in that bay, bay in that creek, creek that's right in front of me right here, they, they just pulled, pulled out right, right there at the mouth of that, of that place, place. And they kind of used those, those boulders as a resting place, place man. man. And, and I uh, just slowed down and started picking them off. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, and everybody's starting to make those comments on the live chat that, listen, you know, the guys that. You guys are obviously one and two right now um, with with just, you know, 14 minutes left. Obviously, anything can happen, but you guys were fishing much slower um, than, than both DC and Fletcher. And I think you guys really took your time in a lot of areas. And obviously, Mark, you were cranking a little bit. 
Now, now, Joe, you were doing a little bit something different. You were fishing. It looked like you were a little bit further out, you know, and you were out there in the middle of the pond. You know, what, what through your ride-through period, what did you figure out? What made you start where you did? Well, well it wasn't really a secret spot or anything like that, but, uh, you know, I, I knew – I could tell the water was kind of falling out there, and I didn't really want to fish on the bank because this is a three-hour tournament. And I knew we were going to have to catch, you know, numbers of fish. So I wanted to try to find something offshore. And, uh, you know, there were some shallow humps, you know, in in that uh, cropple that I I fished around before. But I just thought it would be a good place to check and try. And, you know, I I started just throwing a shaky head and a Carolina rig out there and getting bites pretty quick. Um when we were out there, you know, in our little ride around deal. Um, so there were some fish up there, but it, you know, it was weird. It got tougher. I thought it would get a little bit better maybe as the afternoon went on, but for some reason, those fish just weren't really on top of those humps and they weren't really feeding. Uh, And normally, you know, what's interesting is normally that is the exact opposite is it gets later in the afternoon, Tennessee river, uh, Coosa river, whatever it is. Mark's hooked up right now. He's got another one right here, probably about a, Close to about a pound and a half. I see you, MBJ, reeling one in. You got him weighing him right now. Um, it seems to be the point where at that at that point, you you know, those fish normally group up better in the evenings than they do, uh, you know, at, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock time. Unless there's a shad spawn obviously going on. It seems to get better, and it, and it seemed like that it wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah, the... It was, it was just different, yeah. I mean, I don't know that there was a shad spawn, I think, going on when I got to the lake. There was, a, you know, a lot of birds and stuff on the bank, so you could tell something was going down with that. But um, I think it just got progressive. Just might have lost you, Joe. right there. There you go. Oh, you lost me. Got you back. I tried a lot of different baits, but... For some reason, a shaky head. I, I threw a top water. I mean, those fish were only like three foot of water, four foot of water, maybe at the deepest. Now, did you grab but, those uh, fish, or you just you just found them by fishing? Just, just, just found them fishing, and there was a. It looked like a couple of hard places on top of those humps, but um, they would not come up on a top water. I got a couple about a jerk bait, but they really just wanted something dragging real slow. But I, you know, maybe at daylight they would have came up and been blasting a spook or something you don't know but, don't know, but um <laughs> i'm sure they would have been biting a little bit better but there were some fish out there just um you know i think timing was off a little bit but it was Absolutely. fun i tell you what in three hours in mark and i talked about this three hours you know normally in, in a regular major league fishing event we have seven and a half hours three periods and in three hours one hour periods um, it, it, it's a lot faster pace, which I wouldn't, you know, normally we, it, it's already fast paced in a major league fishing format, but now it's, it's definitely e- even more so with the three hours that we have fishing in this little bit shortened it was more of like a dog fight, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday night derby. Yeah. A th- I fished a couple of three hours tournaments and it's hard to. I mean, you literally can't move at all. Like, you make one or two stops, and you're pretty much, I mean, that's it. But uh, still, we had we had fun. Three hours goes by quick, though, in a derby. I mean, that's a, that's like a blink of the eye, and, it, and it's over with. But we had, we had a lot of fun. And, um, but, yeah, you got you to gotta kind of be on a place with a couple fish on it. I, I think Mark, Mark did that. He didn't probably move around a ton. And I had, you know, those couple humps that had some fish on it, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, no doubt. I mean, 
And I and I tried to do was crazy. I tried to jam pack all that. I tried to jam pack all into that three hour period. Into a three man, hour period, out, man. I was spending out, I was spending in, in, spent some time in the ride around. Some time in the ride around period. Probably spent an hour. Probably spent just graphing, an hour. You know, just graphing, and, uh, you know, like and, Joe uh, said, I found a like few Joe said, I found a few hard places and things like that where there was a few fish on them. But I don't know what happened from that late morning time frame to the time we got out there and we actually started, which was about three or so. Um, man, it was like they just vanished. I don't know. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, there was a couple that on that those spots. That, I mean, it was, it was spots literally, were, it was it was literally like it wasn't every cast, but it was close. I mean, it was like okay, there's some fish on this. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, there weren't big fun, fish, you know? but it was fun. And I, I caught you know probably eight or nine. I was like, okay, I need to just come back here. It's going to be. I should catch some fish, but. Yeah, you know, that's how it was. It, it there wasn't near as many fish biting, but They were definitely harder to find and it's like listen when you find them suckers you know it's i could I, you know it, it seemed every time i hear every angler comment like man this is not as easy as it was this morning it was not as easy as it was this afternoon and, and with it seemed to be a combination of that water dropping um and, and it seemed like a couple of different things but you know i had a comment real quick here they wanted to know what you were throwing on your shaky head and, and, and you know that what bait were you throwing on your shake you had to get those few bites obviously you caught your first fish um one of the better fish caught you know a good solid two and a half ounce spot in the first period what were you throwing that shake you had you know and, and run us down on that yeah i was just throwing yeah a, i was just berkeley throwing a, a berkeley hit worm, worm, worm a magnum and it, it's just a seven inch, inch, it's just a seven uh, inch uh seven inch worm I put on seven inch worm head. i put on the shake head, head. I throw it a lot, you know, a lot in the post spawn because it's just a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter worm, but um, it's got that max scent too. And you know, I'm, I'm I've been a pretty big believer in that, in in the plastics and stuff. But but yeah, it's just a shaky head worm. Uh, that was kind of what I I stuck on it. I was throwing it on my bait caster to start with, but had it on a six ten rod for some reason, and I was swiffing on those fish. I mean, it was like. <laughs> a mega short rod i wanted like a seven six but i didn't have it rigged up but i was just straight just that's absolutely nothing so uh don't <laughs> throw your shaky head if you're throwing on a bait caster don't throw on a 610 it's, it's a little a little nub it's not <laughs> it's not good for them long casts i was, I was stubborn to change. i was too stubborn to change and i still caught a few fish on it but pretty dang solid i know a question from mike he said uh actually here we go david said with iCash being canceled how are we going to bring out our new baits and the companies that we work with so mark i mean obviously you know that's that's a we're all trying to figure it out little by little and you know we don't really know but i'm gonna let mark you know answer his 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 opinion on that one on, on coming out with the new baits like, you know we're, yeah. we're sitting here iCash being canceled you know we're really in a position where we, you know, we don't necessarily normally things are, you know, obviously released at iCast. And so it seems to be the point where, um, you know, obviously I feel like, you know, for the most part that um, day in and day out, iCast, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. But, hey, you know, things are cha changing so much this day and age with, with social media and YouTube and everything that we have going on. Um, you know, it seems to be changing a lot there as well. So what are your thoughts on that? We live in a super techie world now, man. So, you know, it sucks. ICAST is canceled, man. So you won't get those, you know, super detailed videos and in-depth descriptions that we as pros give on all the new stuff coming out. But don't be confused. We've been working hard. We've been in the lab, uh, you know, cooking up all kind of new stuff for, for, for not only ourselves, but, you know, the, the fan base at large, man. So, New stuff will be hitting the shelves come this fall. Trust and believe, man. So be looking out from all of the, 
the the, sp- the partners in, in the fishing industry, man. There's going to still be a lot of great products come out this fall. Hey, Jojo, what, what have you been up to? I got to know. What have you been up to? Actually, we, we checked in down there. What have you been up to with all this quarantine stuff going on? I, I, I've seen you reeling in some big ones. I've seen you out there in that aluminum. Hey, I see you, bro. I got one of them aluminums as well. They're a lot of fun. It's sometimes nice to get out that, that aluminum. That's why we grew up, I feel like, you know, just chopping around, beating around in that aluminum going shallow. So what have you been up to in this quarantine? Obviously, we've all been trying to stay busy. Yeah, I hadn't been in the lab cooking up like Mark says, but <laughs> I, I've been I've been trying though, you know. Man, I, I've been fishing. Um, I've been hanging around the house, doing some yard work, uh, getting fat. Yeah, I actually cut my own grass, believe it or not. I know you don't, but there's no way you do. But I actually kind of enjoy it. Uh, I know it's kind of weird, but. Uh, but no, I just been just doing normal people stuff, I guess, you know, uh, been fishing a little bit on Lake Wheeler and Smith fishing a few tournaments here and there, but Is you can't sit here and, and uh, twiddle your thumbs at the house too much. I think I think a lot of us, you know, have been trying to organize a little bit, and try to get our stuff back to organize. You know, I, mean, I, I had too much tackle. I know that. I already know that. You all look through my tackle. It's just too. It's all over the place. I feel I feel so bad. I feel like I see your your stuff, Joe, and, and Lucas's stuff, and I feel like, dang, I'm I'm horrible. I'm horrible <laughs> at what I got. <laughs> I think you got more. You probably got double what me and Lucas got, but uh, I've spent some. I had to organize my shop a little bit, but I don't know. I used to not be organized. Now I just, I don't know. I try to cut back and you know sell stuff that I don't need or you know and keep the stuff that I just use. So I don't have just ten million crankbaits like you do. I mean, I keep you know a couple <laughs> boxes, but. Um, Got a box. I've I've gotten worse over the years when it comes to tackle. I mean, I'll buy, I'll waste three hundred dollars on something just stupid. Just that's just how I am now. But and and I think I've I've been doing that a little bit. I, I bought you know I bought some tackle during this quarantine. It's kind of I've just I've been a little bored, you know. But now I've been I've been fishing just because I think we're so used to it. You know, we're so used to this time of year to being on the water and staying after it and grinding and like when we're not doing that it just feels weird you know we're just so used to it man that's what we do and they're like what the heck it's a little bit of a weird weird deal and you know and obviously we're all sort of set up in that position where you all we, all, we just you're so used to the grind this time of year it being August, or it being a, it being April, and 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 close to May right now. I mean, you just sit there and you're like, dude, like I, I'm always on the road this time of year, and so it's. I mean, it's nice to be home, but at the same point in time, for me, it's sort of like, hey, I'm gonna have the opportunity to to say hey and spend time with my my little girl Olivia. But man, I'll tell you what, there's no doubt that uh, we're ready to get back out there on the road and and get back to competing. I mean, that's for sure. So, hey, hey, so Mark, he's definitely, he caught him another one, man. I'll tell you what, you guys. Hey, JoJo, I see you 25 seconds. 25 seconds left. JoJo, he's straight cranking on this song right here. Look at this boy. I mean, I'm talking (laughs) cranking. You wait a second. This song isn't cranking anymore. I'll look at him. He's coming in. He's coming in, baby. baby. (laughs) 18, 17. Oh, oh man. man, yeah, that was cool. Uh, uh, what did Mark, what did Mark, 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 Mark catching them on? I didn't yeah. get to hear. I, uh, I, uh, I pulled over this little place right here. I'm fishing some boulders down there, and I picked up the old trusty net, man. Uh, oh, there you go. TRD, I was throwing uh, a one six ounce weight with a little uh, – the deal was the color. I really like yep. that color, man, because it's, it's crawfishy and shaddy at the same time, you know? 
Yeah, yep. it's, it's got that got green, green pumpkin, pumpkin and, and the the shad color. Exactly, kind of blended in, man. And uh, that's just one of my go tos. One of like three. I only use but like three colors really. Um, <laughs> they say still fish. <laughs> He's so mad. Is it lines out and he's still getting after it? Oh, yeah. He's so mad. Look at him skipping them dogs. <laughs> he's going to keep going, too. Oh, yeah. He ain't going to quit. Hindsight. And, uh, I'll tell you what. I really appreciate you guys hopping I on probably. here. I mean, Mark, you, you killed it. Winner okay. of the first ever Pro Bass Shootout. Alabama, man. Hey, you guys are all, all hammers, no doubt. JoJo. Good job as well, dude. I'm, I'm not going to keep you all guys all night, but, man, I know you guys are closing it out right now. I'm going to let you all talk on film here um, on, on the uh, – you got you got a little bit of breakdown from from D.C. as well. But we're going to see you guys in the championship round. I, I got some work to do myself, but uh, you boys will be there. No joke will bring his – Bring it straight, triple A. He was just, he just he coast coasted in this, deal, this so, deal, so we in trouble come championship round. Right? I won't be, I'll be out there at daylight practice. Though, that's, so. that's, yeah. Oh, I will oh, be at this. You're the championship round. round. You'll, you'll, you'll be, be, you'll be you'll driving at two in the morning, morning and getting there. there. Yeah, so, no so messing he, around. He ain't playing. No, no, no. Well, boy, boys, I appreciate you guys so much. No doubt, you guys have been been phenomenal. I really appreciate you guys coming up there or going down to Logan. Mark coming up to Logan. Uh, we don't know. We can't tell you guys where the championship lake is going to be, but you can guarantee that these two guys right here are going to be there. Uh, man, I appreciate you guys hopping on. DC, Fletch. DC will, will still be fishing on Logan Mark, it looks like. He's about to go ahead and, and, uh, and call it good, but I think he's, he's about there. But, man, I, got, I appreciate you guys so much. Appreciate everybody hopping on. Yep, yep. We've had a, a great stream. Um, we'll let we'll let DC close this one out. Late afternoon update, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right fellas, you see, you. see y'all. It ain't real good right here. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna call this place Bogus Martin. <laughs> Atrocious Martin. Nah, those fish are really they're they're in between right now. They're not really out. They're not really in. It's just kind of funky a little bit, but it's all good. If if this water will ever clear up, you be able to get out deep, idle over them, catch them. But uh. It wasn't real good. I don't even know who made the. I guess Mark and Joe Lee did. I don't know. Should have threw a shaky head a little bit more, but I don't like doing that. So anyway, this is all all a great cause, and uh, I had fun today. I was really glad to be part of it. Got to get out here and fish. Any day on the water is a good day. So it's beautiful. Didn't really catch a lot of fish, but we had fun. Now we headed back. All right, guys, we're here with Jordan Lee. You qualified through the championship round. We're not going to tell you where the championship round is yet, but no surprise, awesome. dude. You killed it. Shoot. I don't know if I killed it. It was tough this afternoon. You know, we, we got to practice out here today, yep. and, you know, the fish were biting. It seemed like a little bit better, but. That's what everybody it, said, too. You know, it, but it doesn't matter. It's all this, you know, it's the same for everybody. You know, we want to put on a good show, but we caught some fish, you know, had fun out there. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to be fishing against you am i fishing well i you i i have yeah, I to qualify know. still so we actually oh. i've not fished my full no. i'm not i don't get a buy i was gonna try to get a buy but they no told buy. me that wasn't no gonna buy work for wheeler no buy for me so i gotta fish against uh fish against some boys we'll talk about that here later on but congratulations Thanks, jordan man. lee dude you didn't you I'm got out you here, here you, gr you grinded it out i didn't want to be against, i didn't want to fish against you don't you i, was, I made it i made the rules for a reason i, didn't, I was like heck no it was fun though. Yeah, we, we grinded it out, you know, shaky head. I mean, when it gets tough, you know, this time of year, it's not a bad way to go. So. Absolutely. Dragging around. You caught a few on a jerk bait, oh, shaky dude. head. It's like, yeah. it's a combination of it all. A little combo. All right, man. Hopefully, I'm there with you on the championship round. It'll be fun. All right. Logan Martin legend, Martin Dano Jr. Pull it on up, buddy boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, come yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I could have went for some of that too. Lord, Mo. Large I'm surprising it catch some uh, at least a one big one. I, I don't know. Kind of like a four pounder. A little shot. All right, guys, we are here with the winner of the Pro Bash Shootout Alabama Division, MDJ. Congratulations, Thanks, dude. Man. Thank you. 
crushed on them. Yeah, man, we caught some today, man. It was, uh, you know, it was my first time here. Never yeah. been to Logan Martin, so I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, I just kind of fished off instincts, man, which a lot of times, this is what translates into one of our practice days. Absolutely. And a lot of times you end up having the best day of the week, not on tournament day, after you got gained all this knowledge, it's during practice. And so that's kind of how I went about today. It was like a practice day. Just ran around a lot, man. And uh, I really thought I was gonna catch them on a spinning pole, really good on a, on a, on a TRD. And we caught some doing that, but uh, it was too slow. And I needed to, I need to move around, I need to check areas. And so I ended up picking up that crankbait, man, and that was a deal. I, I could see, like, in the beginning of that second period, or towards the end of that first period, your, your wheels started spinning. You started to, like, things started to click. Yeah. There was something that you could just tell, like, you had that confidence and that adjustment that you made. Tell me what was the key bait for you today. You said the crankbait, but yeah. go into depth of what was going on, what you thought those fish were doing, what stage they were in, uh, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so this is this is the setup right here. This is my signature crankbait, MR6 by Bill Lewis. This particular color, this is an old one, been around since the 60s. It's called Silverado. Uh, it just doesn't get much better for a shad imitation than this when the water's mild stain to it. And so that's what we ran around and through today. Uh, the key was we were fishing, I was fishing short pockets where I felt like bass were spawning in the back. They're just getting done. They're starting to sit up on these short points. But the key was you had to be fishing the points that had the current hitting it. So the hard hitting points, in my opinion, were the deal. Not to mention we're on the brink of a shad spawn. So all that coupled up, these fish are really keyed in on shad, uh, fishing those short pockets, catching those fish that are just coming off beds. Um, I think that's what, that's what got it done today. All right, there you have it from the man himself. On to the championship round. I gotta do some work on Monday. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll let you guys know where the championship round is, but I got uh, I got I got some work work That's ahead of me out. for sure. So congratulations, Mark. Thanks, man, bro. I know you'll sleep good tonight. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> hey, that ride on back to Tuskegee gonna be nice and smooth, baby. <laughs> nice and smooth. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, leave a comment what you think, what we can do better. Make sure to follow Fletcher, Mark, Jacob, Jolie, and DC on Instagram and YouTube. See y'all.